We're going to continue our study of section 3.2 by looking at the empirical rule and Chebyshev's theorem. Let's take a look now at the empirical rule for normal distributions. Now I use the word normal distributions knowing that we haven't studied what a normal distribution is. A normal distribution looks a lot like this. It's the normal curve. It's a bell-shaped curve. Typically a normal distribution is symmetrical and again unimodal so it's got just that one hump in the middle. So this is what we're talking about when we talk about a normal distribution. Now what we want to do is understand how the standard deviation gives us an estimate or a picture of our data. And what it tells us is that if we have a normal distribution, then 68% of our data falls within one standard deviation of our mean. So our mean is going to be right in the middle. And then whatever our standard deviation is, I'm going to add one in that direction and subtract one in this direction. And then 95% falls within two standard deviations. So 95% falls between these two bars. And again, that's plus two standard deviations. And then 99.7 for three standard deviations. Now, again, this is an estimate. So when we start learning about z-scores and finding actual probabilities, it's not going to match up exactly with the empirical rule, but this just gives us a basic idea or basic overview. Now, typically before we learn about z-scores, you're going to get questions like I'm going to show you on the next slide. And that will be based on these percentages. So for instance, if 68% falls between uh, one standard deviation on either side, that means there's 34% on each side. If 95% falls within two standard deviations, that means from the mean to two standard deviations away is 47.5 on either side, and so on. And so that's the kind of math that you're going to be using when you uh, look at the next questions. Let's take a look at a question that involves the empirical rule. It says the distribution of weights of newborn babies is bell-shaped, so again, that's telling us it's normal, with the mean of 3,000 grams and standard deviation of 500 grams. Draw the empirical model. Okay, so really when it says draw the empirical model, it means draw this curve, and instead of mu, put 3,000. And instead of mu plus sigma, add the standard deviation of 500 grams, so 3,000 plus 500 is 3,500. Another 500 onto that gives me 4,000 and 4,500. And then to the left of 3,000, I'm subtracting, so minus 500 gives me 2,500, and then 2,000, and then 1,500. So if they just wanted me to draw the empirical model, I am done. Now they want me to use that information to answer some questions. So question A, what percentage of newborn babies weigh between 2,000 and 4,000 grams? Well, 2,000 is right here at two standard deviations to the left, and 4,000 is right here at two standard deviations to the right, and that means it's within this range of two to the left and two to the right. So on this one, I don't even have to do any math. The empirical rule says 95% of values fall within two standard deviations. So that means two to the left, two to the right. So that's my solution. All right, so let's take a look at one maybe that's a little bit trickier. Now I'm asked for the percentage of newborn babies that weigh less than 3,500 grams. So that's everything to this side. Now, I do have students who would be tempted to add 2.35 plus 13.5 plus 34 plus 34, which seems like a good strategy, except there is a little bit of data out here. So what we need to remember is this guy 
cuts our picture in half. So to the left of that is 50% and to the right of that is 50%, which means if I have all of this, all the way to my mean is 50%, I'm going to add to that this bar, which is half of 68 or 34. So 50 plus 34 is 84%. Lastly, the minimum and maximum birth weights that would contain the middle 68% of newborn baby's weights. So again, empirical rule says that 68% of values fall within one standard deviation. So all I need to know is what's one standard deviation to the left and what's one standard deviation to the right. So that would be 2,500 to 3,500 grams. So what happens if we have data that is not bell-shaped? It's not normal. Well, we can then instead use Chebyshev's theorem, and Chebyshev's theorem works when our data is not normal, and that says that if we want to know the proportion, which proportion is just a fancy name for what percent of data, that lie within k standard deviations of the mean is at least 1 minus 1 over k squared for k greater than 1. So again, don't get confused and caught up in the math here. This is saying if I want two standard deviations, I'm going to take 1 minus 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 minus 1 over 4 or 3 fourths. So if k is 2, then 75% of my data fall within two standard deviations. What about for k equals 3? Again, same formula. I'm just using 3 instead. 1 minus 1 over 3 squared is 1 minus 1 ninth or 8 ninth, which is about 88.9% of our data falls within three standard deviations. And using the same process, 93.75 falls within four standard deviations. So pretty easy math there, but let's take a look at how we might use Chebyshev's theorem. Suppose that in a small town, the average household income is 34,200 with a standard deviation of 2,200. Now, before we do anything, I want us to think about if this were the empirical rule, what our picture would look like. And I'm not gonna draw the curve because it's not a normal model, but I'm still going to go ahead and put 34,200 here in the middle. And then the standard deviation is 2,200. So if I do one standard deviation above, I'm adding 2,200 to 34,200, so that's 36,400, and then I add another 2,200 to that, so 38,6, and so on. Um, actually, let's just go one more. So if I add 2,200 to that, it's 40,800. And then if I do the same thing, moving to the left, I subtract 2,200, that's going to give me 32,000. It's going to give me 29,800. It's going to give me 27,600. Now in doing that, I can see that 27,600 is three standard deviations to the left and 40,800 is three standard deviations to the right. Now I want you to notice how we did the math here which is similar, um, but you're going to find this to be a great method moving forward when we learn about z-scores. So what I've done is I've taken my observed value and I've subtracted the mean. Well, guess what? We've done that before when we found the variance, right? So I took my observed value and subtracted the mean and that gave me my difference or my deviation and then all I did was divide by the standard deviation of 2200 to find out how many standard deviations that is. 
So I did the same thing for each, and notice I got negative 3, and I got positive 3. Now, what does that mean? Well, Chebyshev's theorem says we can use k equals 3, which says 1 minus 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 minus 1 ninth, or 8 ninths, which was about 88.9% of the household incomes lie within that range. So 88% of the incomes in this small town lie between 27,600 and 40,800. Now that we've talked about center and we've talked about dispersion or spread, we want to look at measures of a relative position. 